Hello and welcome to the American Institute for Researching Testing Overview. This is going to be overviewing the test program for grad testing as well as the MCAs this coming spring. The first thing I'm going to show you is a couple of things you need to know. Number one, we're going to cover how logging in is taken care of. We're going to take a look at some of the accommodations that are made, a few of the differences between Pearson and AIR, as well as actually looking at the sampler tests from reading and math. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the login screen. When students log in, again, this is the online sampler. However, when they log in, they are going to need the following three things. Their first name, hopefully they know it. Their Mars ID number, which is easily available from any of your secretarial or Mars coordinators. And lastly, you're going to need a session ID number. Now, this session ID will be created from the proctor. The proctor is going to log in and create a session. And what they will do when they create the session is get a unique number or passcode. And what they'll have to do is post that passcode for students to log in under. After they've logged in, they will be brought to this next screen saying, hey, is this you? Students need to make sure their names are spelled correctly, first and last, as well as their grades, date of birth, and double-checking their Mars numbers. If everything is correct, you hit the Yes button to go on to the next screen. Now, at this moment, again, I'm showing you guys the item samplers. Under the item sampler, there's two options for testing. you got the reading, and you got the mathematics. When the proctor starts up the specific session ID, students will be taking that specified tests so they won't necessarily have this option available so for the example you could see there's two sessions and they can click on either the reading or the math at this time they hit the blue arrow and that takes over to the next screen the next screen is actually accommodations unlike Pearson's test nav AIR has a built-in accommodations already ready available the first one is color choices as you can see on my screen here, I've got three different color choices. The first one is the default white background, which is pretty standard across 99% of the testing platforms. There's also a yellow available, as you can see in the top right corner, and a blue on the far right. There's also an option to increase font sizes or the print size. On the top, I have the default no zoom print size, which is what most students will typically see. And in comparison, right below it I've got the level 2 which is supposedly a zoom of twice as much you could see a significant difference between the two the other feature that is available in AIR testing is an option called text-to-speech this text-to-speech feature is available under the math testing portion not the reading test because it doesn't make a lot of sense to have the test read to you when you're supposed to be reading it so the text-to-speech option allows a student to highlight the information, click on the button, and when they click, the computer will then in turn read the information back to the student. After they start their login, they're going to take a look at the instruction screen, and this instruction screen will walk them through a variety of keyboard controls, keyboard commands that they can do ideally to essentially make their entire test without a mouse. They can also figure out how to do the text-to-speech during this time because it will walk them through that directly. Now I'm going to cover the two different tests available. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is actually the reading test. On the reading test, there's two main sections. The top section, which is actually the portion the students will read, and the bottom section, which is where they will place their answers. On the right hand side there is going to be two scroll arrows or scroll bars. They can go up or down as you can see how the top changed a little bit. On the left side is their multiple guess area. They can hit the A, B, C, or D and it depresses there. This icon is two little things. The flag for review and the notepad. By hitting that little checkbox, it's going to check that question or that specific series of answers, flagging it for review. At the end of the test, the student can then go back and double check to see what is okay or if that answer needs to be changed if they have questions on that one. The other speech bubble that was labeled the notepad, students double click on that. It'll actually pop up with a notepad that students can take and 
type notes that they need for answering that specific question as they're doing their readings. The math test, which is featured here, has essentially a very simplistic outline. You got the question and you got the answers. The one significant difference is on the bottom there, the toolbar. I highlighted it with four buttons. The toolbar does appear on the reading test However, the major difference is the toolbar on the math test will also have the calculator and the formula button. Under the reading test, it has just the zoom in and the zoom out, which is a feature available to all students regardless of having selected a prior zoom. Now, if you take a look at the toolbar options, you've got the zoom in and zoom out, which increases or decreases the font size. The calculator is pretty self-explanatory, opens the calculator. And then there's the formula, which is that formula sheet provided to students for MCA testing that you used to have to print out a billion copies in order to give one for students. You no longer have to do that as the testing program actually provides the formula sheet built into the program itself. We'll look at the calculator first. Here is the standard scientific calculator. We're going to take a look at the expressions. If you go under the graphing portion, you can put in y values. And from those y values, you can get your graphs, as you can see here. You will also be able to get tables, as shown here. And not only that, but you can also find min and max values using window. There's four different options available on this calculator. It's a big step up as opposed to Pearson's last calculator, which was just a standard 10 keypad with, I believe, the sine, cosine, and tangent available only. This one you can see a significant difference, actually showing the graphing, actually showing a table, and actually showing the window min-max value that a traditional graphing calculator would, which is going to be a major benefit to most of the students, considering each student should have some exposure with a graphing calculator. Here's the example of those formula sheets that I was talking with. There is a scroll bar on the formula sheet to scroll up and down, but you can see it's the exact same formula sheet that was provided last year and the year before and throughout grad testing with the math portion. Here's the navigation buttons. If you noticed in the bottom right hand corner earlier on the math screen, there were three buttons. One that said pause, back, and next. The pause button is literally pausing the test. This is actually only available in the practice test, not the large actual MCA full-blown test. So the students can hit the pause button, then they can go through, go to the restroom, whatever they need, come back and resume their test. The, preview, the back button allows them to go back a page or back to the prior question, and the next button goes on to the next. When all the questions have been answered in the item sampler, there's this little red button that's going to appear, and it's called the end item sampler. And once you click on that, it's actually going to bring up a review screen for students to go through. This review screen is the student's final opportunity to take a look at any of those flagged ones that they've done previously, those checkmarked boxes, and also to go back to double check answers. If they are all set and done, then they hit that submit button, that is it. They have submitted their test and they will not be able to go back and redo answers. If you are interested in taking a look at this testing program, you can actually download it from the web page at the top there I've got mnstateassessments.org, that is m-n-s-t-a-t-e-a-s-s-e-s-s-m-e-n-t-s dot org. That brings you to this web page here, and there's two major options. you got the student and family one, which will actually allow you to go on and take a look at important information for students and family members. But on the right-hand side, we have general resources and also the secure browsers. The secure browser is what I was using for this current test and if you are interested in at all in taking a look at it yourself feel free to do so again that web page is mnstateassessments.org this concludes this current presentation I do encourage you to go back and pause if you have any questions or if you have further questions don't hesitate to contact your technology coordinator or visit the web page to hit the general resources tab to see if you can answer them I hope you all have a nice day.